Let's cut open another water heater tank and find out what's on the inside. This time, instead of cutting a square into it like I normally do, I'm going to cut it in half and see how that goes. That first sawzall blade that I tried using was too short, so I only cut the shell and the insulation. This second blade was burnt out because I used it probably a hundred times cutting open other tanks. So I grabbed another blade that was also used, but not as much, and I was able to cut the tank in half. After doing it this way, it seems like this would be a lot easier, so I'll probably do it like this from now on. Once I was able to cut through the tank all the way around, the top half shifted, and I was able to take it off so we can take a look inside. Once again, most water heater manufacturers do recommend that you have these tanks flushed at least once a year so you don't get this buildup on the inside of the tank. The factory drain valves that normally come on these tanks usually have such a small opening that you're not really able to flush anything out whenever you do have the flush done. That's why whenever I'm installing a new water heater, I always replace that factory drain valve with a full port drain valve. Check out all the buildup inside this tank. It was actually past that lower element, which decreases efficiency and causes issues. Also, the anode rod, as you can see here, is completely gone, and its upper element is coated with calcium. As always, let me know what y'all think of this one.